I now hand the conference over to MD and CEO, Ms. Shiva Padalkar. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Session on our results for the nine months ended December 31, 2020. Our results, including the investor presentation, press release, and regulatory disclosures, are already available on our website as well as that of the stock exchanges. I have with me Suresh Badami, who is our executive director. Neeraj Shah, CFO, Srinivasan Parsarthi, our appointed actuary, and Kunal Jain from Investor Relations. I will run through the key highlights of our nine-month FY21 results and would be happy to take questions post that. Starting with an update on business performance, we are witnessing a lift in customer confidence, which is also reflected in the new business premium trends for both the individual as well as the group credit protect business. We continue to see a pickup in savings business on a sequential basis on account of an increase in both the average ticket size as well as number of policies. We have recorded a growth of 8% in terms of individual WRP during nine months FY21. This is on a base of 31% growth last year. Our performance compares well against the private industry, which degrew by 6% on a base of 16% growth in nine months last year. We sold about 6.8 lakh policies registering a YOY growth of 6%. Our market share in terms of individual WRP has increased by 214 basis points from 14.3% in nine months FY20 to 16.4% in nine months FY21. Our market share for the group and overall new business segments amongst the private sector players is at 27.3% and 22.3% respectively. Our product mix remains balanced with ULIPs at 23%, non-par savings at 30%, and PAR at 35%. Our individual and group annuity business saw strong growth in nine-month FY21 of 42%, with annuities contributing over 5% of our individual APE. Our constant endeavor is to identify sources and means to grow our annuity business, including empanel empaneling corporates and introducing new product variants while ensuring appropriate pricing and risk management. We see signs of demand for individual protection uh, reverting to normal levels after the strong surge in quarter one on the back of the pandemic and expected price increase. We remain confident about the medium to long-term prospects of protection in the country on the back of underpenetration as well as increased awareness around the need for protection. We remain focused on maintaining pricing and underwriting discipline whilst addressing this opportunity. Growth in protection business for nine months FY21 stands at 17%, with a share of protection at 7% for nine months FY21. Renewal growth continues to trend well at 22%, with 87% being done via digital modes. While we continue to monitor collections closely and remain watchful about emerging persistency trends, we are seeing good renewal traction on our new products that have now come up for their first renewal premium collection in the last few months. New business margins continue to show an improvement on sequential as well as YOY basis on the back of growth and a favorable product mix. The NBN for nine months FY21 stands at 25.6% with the value of new business in the nine month period at Rs. 1408 crores, having surpassed nine months FY20 value of new business. Our operating return on embedded value stands at 18.3%. We settled 1271 individual and 542 group COVID-related claims as of December 2020. The frequency of claims in intimation has been higher in quarter three. While our actual overall experience remains within our estimates, we continue to monitor the claim trends closely and will keep re-evaluating the adequacy of the COVID reserve to the course of the next quarter. Our profit after tax grew by 6% to, ru to Rs. 1042 crore, and our solvency position remains healthy at 202%. Next, on channel performance. We continue to see strong growth in the bank assurance channel, which has grown at 20% during nine months FY21. Within bank assurance, growth at HCFC Bank continues to trend well, with us retaining our market share. Agency channel continues to gain gradual traction in quarter three with a focus on a profitable product mix and maintaining quality of business. 
We are actively collaborating with our new bank assurance partners, including Yes Bank and SBI Capital Markets, on system integration and commencing new business. We remain focused on tapping a new generation of customers through our online channel, while expanding our geographical presence across the country, especially in non-metro. Moving on to product performance, our focus on driving a balanced product mix backed by our suite of innovative products is enabling us to effectively meet customer demand. I'm happy to share that we have launched a new term plan, HTFC Life Click to Protect Life yesterday. This plan has innovative features such as auto balancing life cover and critical illness cover, an option to get a fixed survival payout from the age of 60 years amongst other features. There's been a concerted effort to smoothen customer journey, refine pricing appropriately, while continuing to be stringent on underwriting. We believe that these are some of the critical building initiatives taken to address the long-term protection opportunity. Our credit protect business for quarter three stood at 95% of previous year's volumes as compared to 64% for quarter two. This has resulted in CP premiums improving to 63% of previous year's volumes for nine months FY21. Our balanced product mix continues uh, to provide a natural hedge across mortality and interest rate risks. We continue to closely match our asset liability cash flows for the guaranteed savings book. While sensitivity only tests small and linear mo movement in interest rates, it continues to be range bound. Our risk management approach has been stress tested and validated by an external reputable actuarial firm. Next on technology. We continue to invest in digital assets with a view of simplifying and buying and servicing experience for the customer. These include Life Easy, an end-to-end -end term, term plan buying platform, POSP, a simplified lean journey for sale of point-of-sale products, InstaSip, a simplified buying journey akin to the SIP way, LifeNext, a comprehensive 360-degree platform for group business, providing capabilities from issuance to claims. These assets also give us an edge in a competitive multi-tie environment by enabling us to integrate with partners quicker and issue policies and service faster. To conclude, given that the vaccination drive has been initiated and the economic momentum on, on the ground seems sustained, we will strive for continued new business growth and an upward trajectory on new business margins whilst adhering to a conservative risk management approach. Our focus remains on ensuring a balanced product mix, diversified distribution with innovation on both new product offerings as well as technology-led solutioning being core to what we do. The detailed disclosure on our results is available in our investor presentation. In the end, I would like to thank all of you for your continued support of our company. We are happy to take questions now. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Suresh Ganapati from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, hi, Vibha. Just two quick questions. Uh, you know, one is on the uh, new labor code, which of course seeks to increase uh, the basic pay, right? I mean, in the sense that you at least need to have 50% of your overall salary in basic pay and thereby increasing the overall um, ATC limit. Uh, do you think this has the potential to actually um, increase the PF amount automatically, thereby clubbing the 1,50,000 and therefore uh, reducing the limit available for insurance and therefore do you think that can have an impact on your business? Point number one. The second thing is on the non-par uh, guaranteed, uh, now that you have of course crossed more than a year, would you be in a position to share what is the 13-month persistency ratio there, Weba? Yeah, hi Suresh. Uh, so non-par guarantee actually, uh, we already have um, put out the details on our uh, in our investor presentation. I'll tell you the slide in a minute. Um, and while we uh, do that, uh, you know, yeah, the, it is slide 29. Uh, so we have split up in terms of uh, uh, traditional, 
Uh, if you want a further breakup, we can maybe give that to you offline. But right now we have traditional unit link protection and then overall company, wherein it, it is uh, 92, but it's comfortably about 90 percent duration of the 13 month persistence on market. Okay. So uh, okay. very low surrenders, and anyway, as you know, uh, we have stress tested it. Even if there were uh, zero uh, surrenders or lapses rather, uh, even then. Um, there would be no stress on the guarantee that has been given. But as we stand today, it is about uh, about 90%. Uh, on your point on, on tax, um, uh, even there we have a slide actually in our investor presentation, wherein uh, tax is now no longer becoming um, really a big reason for us to, for people to buy uh, life insurance. It used to be, it used to be as high as in, in quarter four, as much as 40% uh, contribution of quarter four towards um, towards uh, buying insurance, uh, but now it is like number seventh or eighth reason. Uh, this is on slide 27. Uh, so even when, when there was an entire change in, in uh, uh, all the allowances, um, even at that time, uh, our financial consultants were not up in arms to say that, you know, this is going to impact us a lot, and really there was no murmur at all. Um, maybe it, it might be a, amongst... Um, uh, certain um, customer base, but is not that relevant for us. So uh, coming back to your question, any kind of labor law changes or PF changes, we don't really expect that to be a big driver. Okay, and uh, finally, on on your distribution, um, you know there have been some of your some of your peers where obviously some of the bank partners have taken a stance not to sell certain kind of products and stuff. That is not something which you're seeing across your distribution channel right i mean every every distribution partner that you add is quite open to selling the entire product suite which is there right oh absolutely so uh, this is on, on slide 15 of our presentation wherein we have broken down channel wise uh, segment wise uh, cuts and there you'll see that yeah it is pretty much balanced uh, if i were to take bank assurance it's like a third a third between unit link par non par and so on so um, so absolutely, and you know, that, then that's where different products are suitable for different types of customers, rather than just taking a simplistic view that um, customers don't understand it. And today, customers are getting um, reasonably nuanced, at least amongst uh, the mass affluent, um, salaried and non-salaried. Um, so they do understand as to what they're buying. Um, so yes, uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that it's more driven by what the suitability rather than the uh, distribution partner not wanting to sell it. So I, I can only yeah. add, sorry, Viva, on this, that uh, Suresh, uh, we do work very closely with all our partners to understand what is their strategy uh, in terms of their customer segment, their customer profile, and their comfort of products. So like Viva said, we look at it from a customer perspective, what is the suitable product right next? Then we also look at what is the partner strategy in terms of what kind of products we look at. And that is why we have the ability to work with partners who are, let's say, 80, traditional, 20 UL, and the other way around also where people are higher on UL. But the idea is to sit and work this whole piece together. Where do we get good quality business and the right uh, customer? So we don't have any partner which is saying, look, we don't want to sell this or, you know, this is not something there. We work together and work out. And overall, because of our diversified distribution base, we're able to manage the mix, which reflects in our... Uh, uh, sorry, one last quick question I'll uh, squeeze in. Uh, you know, at the margin, uh, we are hearing that some of the pent-up demand which is there for protection uh, has, has been waning off in December or November. Have you seen something like that happening, Viva, in your portfolio? Yes. So in terms of uh, just Google searches, um, it, it went through a, a peak and then had tapered off. Um, however, within... Whatever was happening in terms of Google searches, uh, we have uh, been right up there in terms of uh, if whatever people were searching. Although overall, it might have gone down. Now in December, we are again seeing an, uh, an uptick. And uh, frankly, Suresh, we, we like it when it is a more sustainable than something that is just flavor of the season because that's usually not sustainable. So we like it when people uh, realize that they need, need protection. Maybe there's a lag, but we are beginning to see uh, that uh, you know the that lag coming through, um, and um, now and upward. Let's see whether that 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 is sustained. But I would also like to believe that uh, it does take time. And usually we have seen even in some of the other pandemics a six to nine month lag between a pandemic and really people realizing the need um, for uh, for buying, especially term insurance. Okay, thank you so much. 
Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shreya Shivani from CLSA. Please go ahead. Yeah, this is Abhash. Uh, I'll just continue with now on the get uh, But we are unable to hear you clearly, sir. Can you take the phone off speaker, please? Yeah, uh, I hope this is better. Yes. Uh, the question was on, um, you know, continuation to the protection trend. Uh, whatever we imply from IRDA numbers, even December, summer short looked like a 20% kind of contraction uh, and probably reflecting in our protection AP also. Uh, now, 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 what I find little, uh, you know, a little underwhelming, if I can use that word, is uh, now even for nine months after the spike, we've had a 17% protection AP growth, and that obviously has some pricing impact as well. So the summer short growth is actually a little underwhelming in a pandemic year, which should have actually been quite a, you know, you know the impact should have been larger. So. Just want to have your a little more detailed view on how, how you see this. Yeah, so other, uh, you know, uh, savings uh, has come back quite meaningfully uh, in quarter three. And that's why you see as a percentage summer short, uh, 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 just given that savings does have a lower amount of summer short, uh, optically looking like it has tapered off. But that's not the case, uh, like I explained. Also, you know, um, People um, have been used to, in India, uh, getting protected to savings products. I don't think that is a wrong strategy necessarily. Uh, today, the IRRs are as competitive as uh, some of the other products that, that people can invest in. And so, to some extent, that has gone back to savings. People are, people are also post-pandemic uh, or towards the end of the pandemic also uh, allocating higher ticket sizes towards savings products. And that, that is really what you're seeing. Now, within that, HFC life will tend to overall grow well. You mentioned 17%. Our NOPs have, have grown as well as our ticket size. So, all the indicators are in the right direction. Uh, it appears subdued due to this reason. So, basically, um, if you sell a large um, Sanche or a non non par Sanche product, the protection bundled with that itself is meaningful. That's why you are seeing protection being a little, uh, you know, the summer short growth in pure protection being lesser. Is that what you're trying to? And they might have had, they might have bought, uh, our customers might have bought a pure term also earlier. Uh, so they are looking as a bundled product. Uh, they might buy a Sanjay Par Advantage, Sanjay Plus, or even a unit link product. Uh, and so there you will see a typically a 10x cover uh, and versus, say, a 100x cover or a 40x cover. Uh, and so optically it will look, you know, versus say quarter one. Quarter one, our term grew by 50%. Uh, H1, it grew by 38%. So versus that, it looks subdued. But I am a believer and uh, that that uh, it's not only going to be a protection story like it is made. Protection will increase gradually, but it has to be done in a calibrated manner uh, with underwriting in mind, at least for us. So it will be for the foreseeable future, both coexisting. And slowly it will be wherein the younger people buy more of protection, while people above 45, for example, will continue to buy savings less uh, protection. Okay. And one second question related again to protection is uh, from a reinsurer side, do uh, you get the comfort that you know, the reinsurers may not ask for another hike anytime soon? Are we, are we there or that's still uncertain for next year? No, I, I think that will remain uncertain uh, into the foreseeable future. And that's why uh, if you overall look at our term growth, it has been somewhat muted because especially in the in this quarter, um, you know, we don't wa we, we want to partner with our reinsurers. We don't want to just throw caution to the winds and uh, write business and take on business, whatever is coming our way. Because in a pandemic, people will want to buy protection, but that's not necessarily what fits into our risk appetite and certainly not what fits into reinsurer's appetite. But if companies continue to write a lot of term business, which they haven't um, done uh, fairly robust underwriting, then uh, at some point in time, reinsurers are going to uh, reprice. So it really depends on the collective uh, underwriting behavior of uh, the industry more than any one uh, insurer or the other. But uh, it's by, the story is by no means over, and that's why it's important that as a, as a sector we are um, we treat uh, the extension of, of reinsurer arrangements as if it's our own 
uh, risk management um, uh, part of our company as against uh, you know just passing on the risk to somebody else to hold that uh, that hot potato so um so and now all of that is part of the growth orderly growth of uh, selling term in a young country perfect uh, that's it give up on my side and uh, i should have started off but congrats your uh, additional business volumes have been uh, surprising you know very very strong so congrats to you thank you atish thank you the next question is from the line of sanket goda from spark capital please go ahead yeah thank you for the opportunity uh, i have uh, basically three questions uh, first question is on on unit persistency and if i look at second month unit persistency which you have disclosed in the first class slide has come up by 4 percentage year on year uh, especially on second month and i can see a similar trend in 2015 month too but but still i see an operating variance number of 80 crores so just just wanted to understand uh, if persistency is behaving little little negatively how how we are able to see the operating variance number whether it is largely driven by the cost saving measures or mortality experience that's the first question second question is is the new product which you have spoken about uh, whether whether uh, this is a basic doubt that whether it will be classified as a saving or protection and and is it like a a, a return of premium because because its survival benefit is paid out as a lump sum or or income payout uh, then then can can it be said that it is more similar to a return of premium policy sold by the other company and i just wanted to understand the margins of that particular product compared to a pure protection plan uh, that, that's the second one and third finally one is that if you look at the protection business i mean as you largely answered it but but just wanted to understand that protection business uh, has declined 13 percent in the quarter and we broadly took a 10 percent kind of a price hike uh, and probably we sold little more lp compared to rp maybe then then is the volume impact on the growth Uh, on protection business seems to be significantly higher than what what is getting reflected in certain percentages this what it understand that 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 protection demand is somewhere plateauing for the sector or for our for our company uh, in that thing right um, so hi sanket uh, three questions that you have i'll answer the first one and then um, second one uh, shrini can take on the new product and third one uh, neeraj can answer uh on unit linked yes you're right that the persistency uh does show stress and we we have flagged this off uh, even as as far back as right at the start of this uh quarter towards the end of last year and that's when uh, if you recall we had trended our persist- persistency assumptions on unit linked portfolio i'm uh, happy and relieved to say that there is nothing further that we need to do and that strengthening has helped us stay within um the revised assumptions of how unit link book persistency is going to pan out um so i hope that answers your question but you know more more broadly speaking it is the construct of the product is going to be especially at the 61st month it is somewhat difficult to retain a um, large flock because there is some reference to some of the other geographies wherein uh, maybe 61st month is much higher but without a without really barriers of exit um, it does become a challenge plus there is as you know the discontinued Uh, policy f- uh, fund guarantee so um, so that that's what that's what i'm alluding to as the construct of the product but nevertheless uh, within the current construct um, whatever we had done in terms of showing up our um, our uh, uh, assumptions we have done that in march and that that suffices so right now we are um, uh, we have a positive um, uh, operating variance on persistency um oh great yeah uh, shrini you want to yeah. take uh, the second point on um sure product yeah. see uh, sanket uh, uh, whether it's a uh, classify as a protection or a savings so the new uh, term product we launched yesterday um uh, see if you look at the plain vanilla uh, term product where the uh, without an uh, rop at the end so uh, for a say a profile say one crore so much short without rop the premium may be say 20000 rupees this is just an example for a given profile now if the person wants to take an rop the premium may be uh, say uh, 30000 or 30000 rupees uh, so the um, if you divide the sum as short by the premium one uh, the person is paying it's still you know about 250 300 times the premium he is paying so in my view for such a large sum as should related to the premium one pays it should still be categorized uh, as a protection product so uh, that is my view and the regulator also in their sort of approve uh, in their product it, it, this is this whole product is categorized as a protection product 
so uh, so th that that's uh, so th that's my view on uh, whether it's a savings and protection. Oh, okay, and, and uh, this is on, on completing that question. Uh, uh, the, the payout is a lump sum payout or income payout, and and, and and how different the margin of the product would be uh, compared to compared to the pure term life, uh, what we uh, typically write. So uh, the uh, margin, we don't give product level margins, uh, but protection uh, typically tends to have a higher uh, 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 higher margin than company average. So that's what I can tell you on the product margin. Okay, okay, fine, good. And, and, on, on, uh, and the last one on the protection growth, uh, basically. So, second on uh, protection growth, uh, like we just, uh, you know, uh, mentioned in the opening comments as well. For us, uh, honestly, nothing's changed from a medium to long term perspective. Of course, we are very watchful in terms of what's happening uh, in the near term, closer to uh, ground in terms of what's happening due to the pandemic. So, we've uh, been tracking very closely in terms of what's happening with. Uh, the uh, claims overall basis we are still within our uh, estimates so there is mortality uh, variance is also positive but uh, we are seeing uh, uh, covid claims increase and especially in uh, towards the end of quarter 2 and beginning of quarter 3 we started seeing that and uh, we, we saw a peak coming through sometime in october since then uh, november december have been uh, uh, on a lower trajectory so this is something that we need to watch and in this environment uh, do we want to completely go out there and uh, you know put ourselves as well as the, the reinsurance capital on risk we do not want to so uh, we will be calibrated in the short term quarter four with the launch of this new product and the environment uh, improving we are absolutely uh, looking forward to uh, getting back to uh, uh, the growth there this is also coinciding with uh, some of the search trends that we would have seen. Uh, it did absolutely peaked in uh, the first quarter, given all this apprehension around the pandemic and people getting uh, extremely uncomfortable uh, with, with everything that was going out. Uh, with every passing month, people are getting a little more, uh, uh, let's just say, uh, more uh, uh, normalized in terms of the way they're thinking about it. And they will, with a cool head, think about protection as they should rather than, you know, as a knee-jerk reaction. So the searches have also indicated that. And uh, again, since uh, December and January, we started seeing an increase in searches. And within the searches, uh, HDFC brand as a search, uh, we've seen a fairly uh, a consistent uh, top of the uh, mind recall there. So that is something that we are uh, very uh, um, uh, bullish about. But in terms of the demand coming back, uh, it, will, uh, it will still take a lot of things uh, coming together for that. And uh, we, we are fairly confident that from a medium to long term perspective there is no uh, issue that we see there but yeah in the short term we will be calibrated in our approach okay great, great. that's it from my side thank you thank you a reminder to the participants please limit your questions to per participant should you have any follow up request you to rejoin the queue please the next question is from the line of harshit toshniwal from prem invest please go ahead Hi, I think uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, one, two questions. I think uh, the first one is on the protection piece itself. Uh, on, on that, I think the reduction which we see in volumes, uh, I, I guess that uh, given your commentary, it looked like more a conscious shift to not be very aggressive in that segment in the last two, three uh, months. But can you throw some color on what is happening on the distribution piece for us? So, uh, who, uh, is, is this something that we want to be more selective when it comes to which channel uh, for this segment, given the risks could vary across different segments, some broader color, whether online is better than offline or a bank channel like HDFC is better than many of the other partners. And secondly, ma'am, when we look at the overall growth, so Banka in 3Q has been an excellent growth driver, not of 40% based on the numbers. But when we look at the agency channel, that has been flattening out. Now, is it that the par Sanjay which we are having, so do, like Sanjay, uh, non par did the great job at the agency channel. You think that there could be more products or differentiated combination, copy products, something which can be done to, uh, to, to bulk up the sales on the agency, please? Yeah, uh, actually, very good question. Um, the, I'll take the second one uh, first on uh, on Banka agency. Uh, you're right that Banka has in in the first nine months uh, grown pretty well. Agency has been 
to some extent muted but i'll give you an agency why i'm not worried at all couple of data points you know our quarter 1 degrowth was 39% quarter 2 was 6% and quarter 3 was almost flat uh, so a break even has happened uh, and uh, i have no doubt in my mind that we'll end the year uh, with with uh, with growth uh, and uh, second point is that last year agency um, grew over 60% and uh, on a nine month uh, basis uh, about 32 or percent so um, it was uh, so that there is a very significant base effect as well um, also online for example grew about 56% uh, at while banka last year grew only 6% so the base effect for the different channels is very different so optically it looks like uh, banka has grown disproportionately uh with agency channel uh, another aspect is that quarter 1 was bit of a uh, struggle because uh, uh, you know just adopting digital and also accepting that this is going to covid is here to stay for a pretty long time as against it being a one quarter problem when that started becoming evident around june i think that's when um, they, uh, you know a lot of credit to our financial consultants and our frontline um people in agency channel to embrace uh, and i won't talk about it again because i've, I've been mentioning the last couple of quarters are a platform uh, wise and also other modes of uh, selling digital and that's why you see the quarter on quarter very significant uh, improvement quality of business also has been retained again there could have been either dilution in terms of selling a lot of unit link or uh, somewhat um, not as desirable quality of business Uh, that the channel hasn't slipped on either of that so very much adhered to the product mix that is optimal for agency channel continuing to be um, a very profitable channel uh, in terms of nbn uh, so very much right in terms of uh, building blocks also um, we are uh, right up there with a second um, um, uh, company in terms of ranking uh, to add i think if i remember about 18500 agents in the nine months um so again all of that is important in terms of building block for the future so for the rest of the year so um that's really the backdrop of uh, my my uh, fair amount of confidence that uh, this will start evening out and this is more a covid related aberration than than anything else and uh, quite frankly even with with bank assurance um given all what they were going through in core banking in the first quarter there was a fair amount of focus on selling other things uh, and insurance was also one of them so it is a combination of uh, of factors um on your first point about protection uh, and how distribution if yeah. you want to sorry uh yeah, sorry so on the agency part how has the sanjay par uh, been working so do you think that 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 product specifically has clicked more at the bank channel than agency channel because for us now maintaining that balanced mix requires that across both bank and agency that can be maintained yeah but if you look at uh, slide 15 uh, sanjay par is 36% in the first 9 months slightly higher than bank assurance channel or or really higher than other channels um, okay okay yeah all right got very balanced in terms of um, non par savings is 36% which is largely um, yeah. plus par is 38% which is sanjay par advantage uh, and term is very noticeable what suresh is mentioning 13% term so uh, actually better than where we ended last year and this is uh, reasonably uh, creditable because if you look at some of our peer group you will not find uh, agency channel having this high level of term it's it's somewhat easier in a bank assurance channel especially uh, if one is able to um, uh, to be aligned with your distributor that you are you have to sell protection but agency is a lot more dispersed uh, and engagement is with uh in our case you know over 1 lakh agents and counting so uh, so so really moving the needle on this one um uh, is quite creditable so and that is something that we haven't um uh, diluted upon um growth will come back uh, suresh you want to add anything so i think broadly the way you covered it i i think look we are monitoring each of the channels based on uh, right from the claims experience to the quality of business and persistency as well as growth on top line and and we do kind of balance the product mix that we are looking at each of these so in agency like we were mentioned look there is a certain retail equation which works as the uh, new agent addition as well as the productivity builds up uh, post covid we will see the growth coming back and uh, protection also we are fairly calibrated in terms of which channel will contribute to how much 
broadly banka agency and online have contributed significantly to our and direct have contributed significantly to the uh, protection business and i i think that will continue as long as we ensure that we maintain all three aspects of the business sure got it got it uh, okay thanks thank you thank you the next question is from the line of dipika mundra from jp morgan please go ahead uh hi vibha thanks for the opportunity and many congrats on a great set of numbers uh my first question is that if 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 rates were to hypothetically harden from here uh, like you have done in the reducing rate cycle how would you uh, you know alter your product mix uh, in that environment so you're referring to uh, a non par product presumably when you say yeah. that Yeah. yeah because it yeah if you see the sensitivity i mean right now on a with hardening of face it shows negative sensitivity to me but i'm sure uh, uh that, that's probably because of all the hedging that you put in place but generally how would you think about product mix in a hardening rate cycle so the uh, way we look at this dipika is that uh, it is all relative to what else is available in the market uh, and we will reprice we have a dynamic repricing um, governance um and in line with what is the prevailing rates that are available on for new business which you are referring to uh so that happens that is number one second is we will peg it to what else in terms of financial products that are available and as long as we are competitive um there is a place under the sun uh, for products like this and also what is the outlook is this a temporary fall is it a more permanent or into the foreseeable future if it's a, in in the foreseeable future and we reduce rates for example uh usually the customer is also having a similar outlook uh, and thinks that it could do- drop further so even at a reduced rate so for example from the high of 6% today if you are closer to 5% even then it is uh, an attractive product to lock in some of your savings and i think customers are beginning to realize that it's not all equity versus debt versus you live versus, so they realize that some portion they want it to be uh to to completely eliminate risk in uh, post retirement or when they are older and that's where this product comes in um as an attractive product regardless of um, what it might have been a year ago or one and a half years ago so real view looking i think happens lesser we we rarely encountered that with customers it's usually forward looking as to what is the outlook and we just to add to that the pickup in terms of uh, the hardening of interest rate uh, basically the sensitivity that you're referring to uh, so i mean interest rates go up obviously from a product perspective it becomes more attractive for both for us to price as well as from a customer to buy the implication in terms of the sensitivity is uh, really more in terms of uh, uh, the the implication of the cash flow hedging that we have which is the excess assets which uh, get uh, that come through which do not have a corresponding liability that is what is causing the interest rate uh, sensitivity that you are seeing and that is something that we are uh, comfortable with given that we always have the option to uh, hold that in cash but the problem is with that is that you end up losing a lot of yield unnecessarily uh, for us the key is that the assets are matched uh, very well with the liabilities as long as that is done the long term and the tail risk is protected any sensitivity that is happening at the shorter end is more a trade off between yield and uh, uh, holding the uh, assets in cash so that is a trade off which is uh, something that uh, we continue to monitor and uh, the sensitivity as you see across periods has been fairly range bound okay uh, thank you both that's really clear just one follow up from my side uh, vibha you mentioned earlier that the industry should you know uh, together be slightly more disciplined on the mortality risk uh, as a pool uh which could prote- potentially protect from further reinsurance rate hardening uh in the current context how, how i mean we've seen some competitive activity in the past year uh this year how do you uh, how would you think you are positioned in terms of uh, term pricing amongst your peers and do you see overall term prices hardening further uh shree you want to take that yes sure. um so deepika we uh the mod and the underwriting practices have uh, actually largely strengthened across the industry thanks to the intervention uh, from the reinsurers uh, fraternity in the last 8 9 months so i would expect the quality of the book going forward as a result of all these stringent practices now being adopted uh, uh, should actually help build a stronger protection book going forward uh, and as far as the price hardening is concerned uh, you know already different companies have um, sort of uh, 
uh, on awaiting approvals from, from the authority uh, on uh, on increasing the prices. Uh, I have uh, approved a few products um, in the industry already, and uh, one of our products got approved, uh, which we launched yesterday. And uh, uh, I mean, um, this is like any other product. So there, there will be uh, experience that will emerge from, uh, from from the book that has already been written, and based on the experience, reinsurers will keep uh, uh, you know revising the prices. So if the experience are adverse they will jack up the prices, and if the experience is favorable, they will reduce the prices. So this is a continuous process. Uh, what we are now probably seeing is, uh, it's a little bit on uh, the experience being adverse, the uh, reinsurers uh, are hardening the prices now. And if they harden the prices, the, uh, the companies like us also need to uh, sort of keep pace with them and uh, increase the prices. But so far, whatever has happened thus far is only one rate increase that has happened. But there is also, uh, like I think you alluded to, there could be a further increase also uh, along the line. Uh, but we just need to wait and watch as to what happens. Uh, but as of now, uh, there are a number of companies uh, which have already increased the prices uh, over the last few months. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you. The next question is from the line of prayer chain from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, congratulations, Zibban, on the set of numbers. Uh, firstly, on the term insurance, and I was continuing on that point, uh, is there a you know underwriting tightening that has gone on, and the rejection to application ratio has gone up? Uh, is that a, is there a, some kind of trend that's emerging there? Because what you're hearing is that uh, the reinsurers are. I, I uh, can't hear you very well, sir. Okay, that's one thing. Is this better? Yeah, it's better. Yeah. So I'm asking on the term insurance bit, uh, the, whether the underwriting tightening has happened and that has caused the rejection to application ratio move higher. And what you're hearing is that the reinsurers are asking for a much higher number of medical checkups uh, and the customer's willingness to go to uh, the medical center is still very low. And that is for possibly one of the reasons why the, uh, you know, the uh, protection slowdown has happened. And uh, uh, that would be just one of the reasons. And uh, the other part of the question, the other question was on the non-par side. So is there, you know, we are that on the ground, the demand is pretty strong. So is there a conscious effort that you'll have slowed down? And what is your outlook going ahead for the non-par part of the business? Yeah. On the first part, I think it is, it is inevitable when you, uh, we are in the business of writing insurance and we have to evaluate uh, risks that we take on to our balance sheet as well as the insurer's balance sheet in order for it, for it to be a long-term sustainable um, value proposition. Um, and, uh, and that's where I think uh, one can write short-term business um, if one has been used to. Um, being somewhat aggressive on uh, underwriting practices, and there are and there is an entire spectrum. Uh, what I can say about our practices uh, is that uh, it, it is uh, what we've been following at least for the last five six years when we've been very active in this space uh, before protection um, really became very topical. Um, we continue to see emerging risks. Uh, there is a fair bit of analytics that we look at every every second day, really, uh, to see what is emerging and what is the dynamic underwriting that we need to do without it being a one-size-fits-all, that if it's X, you know, salaried individual of this age, that's a very simplistic way of underwriting. We've long moved away from that kind of uh, underwriting. That might form an in input, uh, but that's, it doesn't stop with that. Um, and... Um, and so, yes, it is. Um, it is inevitable that um, uh, the, you know whether we reject, whether we um, uh, rate up, uh, and and various such combinations, or, or whether we go back with a proposal of a lower sum assured, um, that has to be because um, you know a short term build up of protection number isn't that difficult to show. Uh, but really, over a period of time, and we're talking over the next five ten years, what is the um, Variance on uh, mortality experience versus assumptions, that's the only moment of truth. Uh, and that's what we don't want to leave a legacy to uh, another team at HCFC Life down the line uh, who has to be saddled with this. And so we're cautious. Uh, whether that res results in higher rejection ratio uh, or higher checks, yes, it will. And more than higher, I think, different checks. And those checks keep evolving and changing. 
so that even distribution and channels uh, don't often know what is going to be asked because of the of the dynamic nature and uh, also to have an open book with the reinsurer to say come and see whatever you want to see um, because we are aligned with the risks that you are seeing otherwise we will uh, push it back with you um, conceptually but once we agree then we will follow what, whatever it is that that you're saying and and uh, there are different market practices of perhaps you know simple things like not asking for covid questionnaire lot of uh, push back with our sales teams also because market practice was not to ask for that but i think in a pandemic how does one price against a pandemic it is virtually impossible we are in the law of probability so um, one you know there is a reason why we have to ask uh, because if you don't ask you can't reject uh, if for example he he or she was covid positive at the time of taking a policy so here we would counsel the individual to wait and so on these are just simple examples but um, that's why you know my earlier point is this is nascent if all of us just start test something on one number which is my protection percentage is x that's not that difficult in the sense that uh, some of these uh, nuances we could start unraveling down so at least we operate in the zone that we understand risks that we reasonably have a sense as to what are we underwriting um, and build this business big by big on your second point on non par Uh, not at all about uh, diminishing demand uh, it's really uh, we believe in a balanced product mix um, you know while we are fully hedged and we are both cash flow and duration matched and uh, we have uh, been engaging with all of you uh, on the modes of how we have done it nevertheless uh, just in the uh, underlying philosophy that we don't want all our eggs in one basket any basket and that's why we have brought it down uh, very meaningfully Uh, so nine months you saw non-par savings at 30%. Um, in the first half, first quarter of uh, last year, for example, it had gone upwards of 60%. Uh, and so our ability to uh, really uh, steer the uh, the vehicle to in a particular direction that we want to get to uh, is something that we have demonstrated time and again. Uh, and that's where you will see our almost a third uh, give or take in terms of uh, exposure to any segment. And that is what really has. Um, enabled us to withstand and uh, and survive a lot of uh, volatility that we see uh, impacting our sector time and again i uh, just uh, last year on pandora stump product any of uh, these products are about to be launched any time now so you know uh, only one or two players have launched that product but uh, most of them would be launching them in the near term any more, any thoughts that you can share trini you want to take yeah Uh, so yeah, uh, I think we should uh, launch the product uh, fairly soon. So uh, my hope is that from say first of February or so, we should have the product on our shelves. So my question was more on you know how do you see this product uh, panning out in the sense that you know it's more of a, a, a segment where you will be writing more riskier cohorts, uh, you know smaller ticket and lower income category uh, category uh, segments. so uh, how do you see whether you would be able to maintain the profitability at the what you are earning on the uh, pure term plans so which are selling uh, right now uh, these are these so something on that sort could be helpful so yeah it is certainly a new segment uh, for us um, uh, since uh, i think collectively as an industry we never really um, you know sold uh, uh, individual terms or long term um, protection products um, at that kind of a segment so it will be a new experience um, Uh, for the entire industry, um, but uh, you know uh, we can still do underwriting. So uh, you can always, uh, based on different uh, um, you know uh, parameters that one would have uh, from the past experience, and also with the reinsurer's uh, support, we will learn collectively as an industry to uh, assess the risks that we take on board. Uh, so I would expect the underwriting to get a little bit more stringent. uh since i think the price um, uh, at which the product would be launched in industry uh, uh, may be slightly lower uh, since it's going to be a mass uh, it's uh, it, the product is going to get to a uh, to a sort of a you know, uh, lower um, uh, middle class kind of a segment um, uh, so the, uh, i think the, the way to uh, ensure the book is uh, financially viable is through stringent underwriting norms so i think the people will adopt different underwriting styles which will evolve over a period of time and with that i think the uh, there will be a learning phase for the next 6 months or so 
and then uh, post that you know people will uh, some equilibrium will settle down i, I think in this segment all right thank you so much thank you a reminder to the participants please limit your questions to one per participant should you have any follow up request to do you join the queue please the next question is from the line of hitesh gulati from hitong security please go ahead yeah uh, thank you for taking my question ma'am my question is on the working committee report on indemnity sale by life insurance company that came in november so from what i understand the committee uh, did not allow life insurers to sell indemnity in them independently but they said that you could sell products of uh, non life insurers is that understanding correct and is this practically doable uh, so it is it is certainly doable um you know and frankly when you look at if there is a single regulator uh, then those products are approved by the, the same regulator uh, so if a bank uh, can uh, sell insurance products then um, uh, then perhaps a life insurer can be a distributor uh to sell health indemnity and even maybe vice versa why uh, why not sweat our distribution channels that we have built painstakingly over the last two decades uh, to really maximize and also if we were to look at customer keeping the customer in the center uh, the the reason is how do you get to the customer because today if a customer wants to buy health insurance uh he does he really know who to go to for health uh, and there's general there is sahi there is uh fixed benefit that uh, life insurers like us sell and so on we ourselves used to sell health indemnity in the past so it it is quite con- um, confusing for overseas medical he goes to a general insurer and so on so so if if for example hypothetically if a life insurer is allowed to sell indemnity then in a one conversation uh, you are taking the product to the um, customer rather than making the customer run around to various insurance company and do homework for the end time so that is that is the reason for uh, the behind this logic uh, but we are yet to hear back from the regulator so uh, um, it my understanding is correct this will be like a commission fee income product for you and not a you will not be a product manufacturer is that understanding right so we would like to be a product manufacturer but um, but it looks unlikely just given the current construct between the the way there are three arms of insurers in india uh and in that construct it just looks uh, there's no in our view it makes a lot of sense because uh, health penetration is woefully inadequate and life insurers a have done it before and we have the distribution um a muscle power uh, but it looks uh, somewhat doubtful for that happening we are saying that as a second best op- option if we want to uh, and the intention is to keep customer in the center why not allow us to distribute like we are allowing other financial institutions to distribute thank you that's it so much thank you hitesh thank you the next question is from the line of rishi junjunwala from iifl capital please go ahead yeah thanks for the opportunity um couple of questions from my side uh, one is just on you know a balance between par and non par which so, so you know the last 12 months or so uh, par which used to be almost half of non par in terms of size has actually now crossing it um just wanted to understand you know uh, uh, what wh- how are we deciding to maintain that balance between par and non par given that you know it would be customers requirement versus you know our push strategy to the customers um, especially when uh, you know we really look at the difference between the two uh, for i'm assuming 90% of the people it is more about what we end up pitching to them rather than you know what they exactly know what they require so uh, uh, you know any reason why par would actually grow faster for the past 9 months versus non par or going forward how it can potentially pan out suresh you want to take this yeah so you know uh, if he uh, frankly look the customers out there we believe as a large opportunity whether you were to look at ul non par par pure term and and you know our strategy has actually been to drive a balanced product mix based on channel level profitability and channel level capability so the way we look at it is it's not that we are trying to uh, pitch a par product to somebody who's got a non par requirement yes there are product uh, value propositions which are there a par product has a certain value proposition and non par has a certain value proposition there are customers who we want to make sure are right fit for whichever product we are selling 
So there's a lot of effort that we do in terms of balancing the product mix through each channel. One, by building capability. Two, by ensuring that, look, our people are trained, the reach out happens. And when we do believe that over a period of time, the market is large enough for us to be able to drive a certain product mix. Right? So, uh, and internally also, we keep looking at what does the power product proposition compare as compared to what is available in the rest of the industry and as well as how does it compare to the non-power proposition internally as compared to the rest of the industry. So, you know, frankly, the product has to be good enough for us to be able to sell it to the customer and ideally a lot of us should be buying it ourselves. So, you know, some of us may want a non-power, some of us may want a power where there is a probably a higher uh, bonus which comes in and, you know, you find a return uh, reasonable. So, we do benchmark it. Uh, I do think that, look, there is space for both. But given that as a strategy, we want to have a balanced product mix, we do definitely make sure that the channel level strategy, the drive, the capability building is all aligned to make sure that at the end of every quarter, we kind of remain within certain boundaries. And uh, yes. just to add, uh, Suresh, to that, uh, what Suresh just mentioned is that, see, ultimately, uh, whatever product is sold and bought by the customer, as long as the persistency is uh, is good, it, it is a proof of the fact that the customer, one, has understood and second, needs the product and is going to benefit from it over the long term. So that's something that we track very closely across each of the categories that we sell. So, Rishi, just to add, you know, we launched a product called the Sanche Maximizer. It's actually a combo of both the PAR and the non-PAR. It's a great value proposition because, you know, from the end solution point of view, the customer can see a huge value in terms of how the product features are both actually combined and he gets a certain guaranteed component and he gets a certain, you know, power upside. So, you know, we, we have looked at how do we take it across people who are looking only at power, who are looking at non-power, who may probably want a combination of both. Understood. And on, uh, uh, you know, just on ULIPs, right? So, if I really look at, uh, you know, your ULIP click to wealth, a product which is available online seems to be the most efficient product on the street when it comes to the consumers in terms of pretty much zero charges except FMC and a little bit of mortality. Um, I just wanted to understand our strategy around it. Are we not pushing it enough because of the low uh, profitability? Because otherwise, I don't see a reason why that product should not be a super hit. Thank you, Rishi, for that because... Uh... That's something that we've been trying to uh, also evangelize. Um, you know, it's exactly that. It's a very low, low, um, slimly priced uh, product. And so um, we haven't really gone to town in terms of uh, allocating an ad budget for, for that. But yes, through word of mouth, the fact that that product is so slimly priced, it is very, very attractive to the, uh, to the policyholder. And over a five-year term, it's definitely better than, say, an equity mutual fund. Uh, and exactly like you said, with the cap of 1.35% versus say 2 odd percent and uh, fund switches that are not taxable, uh, there's a life, and I'm not even mentioning life cover that is over and above the IRR that I'm talking about, uh, means that it is it's a very good wealth accumulation, and especially when you if you take it in the life of a on the life of a relatively young person, even more so as the mortality charges are, um, are again very minimal. Uh, Yes, I think uh, it is just that it is, um, like I just explained, so we are hoping that over a period of time people come searching for products like this because uh, they are used to buying uh, digital um, uh, products from HFP Life and uh, they will start having this, uh, uh, this following in terms of people who, exactly like the evolution that we saw that happened in, uh, in the asset management uh, sector. So um, we expect that to continue to happen and, and even our click to protect um, series, and you mentioned click to invest, or even other click to pension, or click to retire, rather, and uh, click to protect. Of course, uh, that all of that is now uh, uh, gathering um, a brand unto itself, and um, we'll see. It, it will be steady growth. It's not going to be phenomenal, at least in, in some of these uh, products with uh, with low visibility. But yes, they are very good products. Actually, Viva, just to add, look, some of these products are meant to look at a segment which is new to us. In some sense, it is targeting the mutual fund market because these are equally comparable in terms of returns or better over a long period of time. So, you know, we, we do believe that look, like there is a protection space, there is an annuity space. There is clearly an online uh, unit link space like products like Click to Wealth and Click to Invest, which by itself the evolved customer will be able to come and take digital. And frankly, the very reason we solved for this product was that that you know we just wanted to put to rest 
the time and again repeated line that uh, you one should unbundle and buy protection separately and uh, equity investment separately we demonstrated that this product in the current avatar of a unit link product can uh, deliver superior returns while giving protection okay oh, no. thank you next up thank you thank you the next question is from the line of ajox fredrick from bnk securities please go ahead uh, thanks for your opportunity uh, my question is with respect to uh, rop return of indian versus short term from your perspective uh, how do you see that planning out going forward for industry from where we are for a country like india which of those products do you think will be growing at faster pace any one of these yeah so i think um, from a customer perspective uh, i think i just gave this example a while ago on the call so for a one crore summer shows um, the non rop version will be say for a given profile might be 20000 rupees um whereas the rop version will be um say 35 40000 rupees right so that's the kind of a, so if someone wants to get the money back at the end of um at the, at the end of the term and which i think the indian psychic generally prefers uh, a, a return of the premium um i i i think for our market people would prefer the premium to come back because the plain value option if you survive the term there's nothing to be paid so i think it's a good uh, value proposition um also um it also in some markets it sort of um, plays as a a uh, legacy planning tool especially if you sort of stress the um, term a little bit uh, to say 85 or 90 years old uh, you can actually make it a legacy planning tool as well so with that for both aspects in mind uh, where indian psyche prefers a uh, refund of premium at the end of the term and also it serves as a legacy planning tool i think the market will probably more uh, tend towards an rop than a non rop use my view Oh, okay, so great. And just a quick thing question. So last time I think we discussed about the protection share from HDFC Bank. Uh, how has that moved? Given that uh, now the prices have almost uh, the difference is almost shrunk, and our prices are almost comparable to what the competitors are sharing uh, to HDFC Bank. So how has our, our share of business, particularly protection share of business from HDFC Bank, moved? Suresh, yeah, so. look we we have always been pricing our products competitively and i we do understand that look there are two other players who will offer their product at a certain price i think it's not just the price it's also a question of the uh, brand the service level the claim settlement ratios so we have been constantly benchmarking our overall market share as well as our term market share at the bank Uh, i think the idea is to stay comfortable in a certain segment based on the pricing as well as on the margins as well as on the overall claims it is supposed to come in we have actually gained you know we had kind of recalibrated our uh, pricing somewhere at the beginning of the year and uh, we did a few tweaks to our overall uh, proposition and we found that our market share at hdfc bank in protection has actually gone up as what we were last year with the launch of a new product which is the kit to protect life uh we have again re looked at the features it's a fantastic product if you were to go back and have a look at it especially given the current context in terms of uh being able to balance between your protection as well as your critical uh, illness health requirements we do believe we have a winner uh the pricing has been also again looked at like i said look the pricing has to make sure of multiple aspects it has to make sure that the customer pricing is right it has to make sure that Uh, you know the overall margins are right and second in today's context the reinsurer is also looking at it uh, favorably I, i think our product team has done a good job of balancing all three along with the features so yes the market share in uh, the firstly the overall protection in hcc bank has been going up they have done a very very good job in terms of focusing on the standalone term within that our share is going up and and we do believe with the kind of products that we are looking at and the way we want to position ourselves we will probably see better in the future got it sir that was very helpful thank you that's it for me thank you this is a reminder to the participants please limit your questions to one per participant should you have any follow up request to reach on the queue please the next question is from the line of manish shukla from city group please go ahead yeah good evening and thank you for the opportunity uh, we were the point that you mentioned earlier about uh, propensity of indians to look at insurance more as savings rather than protection and also the ticket size differential 
uh, is it realistic to expect uh, in terms of mix uh, more than a percentage point kind of increase per year on individual production uh, on an ongoing basis there are uh, two aspects to this manish uh, one is that if one is not as tight on underwriting uh, then certainly and these are the comments i made earlier overall uh, on on how protection can grow uh, in the uh, short term versus uh, medium term so yes one can make a sprint and because all of you are tracking this number and i think today we have i think 50% of the call today has been to discuss protection so it is not that difficult to show each each year uh, increasing by 300 400 basis points so that is one second it is also easier if um, multi tie is not the case um, and you have uh, one distributor with whom there is alignment uh, even if the pricing is significantly higher or reasonably higher than what could be out there so there is perhaps uh, not equal amounts of information or um just a way of selling is that um, the customer um, does not want to compare for it that way. um and so one can drive protection uh, through that but in the in the medium term and and longer term in a in a completely open architecture and open market uh, and uh, and decisions that are made informed decisions that are made i i think that growing 100 200 basis points will be more sustainable than growing 500 600 basis points um uh, so that is really so it's it's also a graph between um growth and and risk appetite uh, and what it does to operating variance on average value uh, and also uh, you know most companies don't uh, disclose what their operating variances are don't even disclose embedded value so really you know on one side we are so nascent as a sector on the other side we are talking about galloping on protection and that's why where i would just want to balance it out and i think what reinsurers are doing are just an early warning indicator of that um, and so that it needs to be tempered uh, growth as well as risk uh, there's a tempering uh, and toggling between the two Um, and so, from HSC Life's point of view, it will be a brick by brick growth in protection, and savings will um, continue to also grow and be an important aspect of uh, of uh, of even coverage, even in terms of summer short for us in the uh, in the near term. So, specifically for you, the way annuity and individual protection businesses are growing, is it fair to assume that two to three years out, annuity might be a bigger piece than individual protection? undoubtedly uh, and and that's something i've always said i think that retirement is an even bigger opportunity than protection uh, and the numbers the sheer numbers just show and also a whole host of demographics of people living longer and so on and inflation where it is um, if you look at slide 14 we are very very aspirational of you know growing our retirement corpus uh, 3x Um, uh, uh, by the time we reach uh, 2025, um, and that really we, we put out a number in terms of our aspirations, and this is uh, um, there is a lot of interconnectedness between various aspects of retirement, whether it's superannuation and uh, whether it is NPS and whether it is our own pension policies and and so on, um, and it is also you know stickier business. Uh, it's also a little bit takes a little bit longer to engage, especially on government business. and that's something that uh, enthuses us so it's a i mean we are equally enthused by both protection is seeing a different year and now play retirement is a slightly longer play understood thank you those are my questions sure thank you the next question is from the line of pratik from nepon india please go ahead yeah hi ma'am ma'am i just wanted to check you know you talked about uh, in saving we brief the balance product mix and protection there are some headwinds uh, which are basically that we have been cautious about that segment uh, in terms of bnb margin uh, how should i think about levers going ahead now so we've always had a uh, um, several levers uh, for us to work on our uh, on our bnb margin and and that's where i think the balanced product mix comes in uh, very handy um, so it's not just all eggs in the protection basket um, but Uh, but but really it's, it's a nuanced approach of which what is the cost of acquisition of a channel what does the customer want as well as um, what is the underlying product construct uh, and uh, it has to be a three way win win value proposition uh, and calibrating that on a daily basis so we track our product mix at a channel sub channel level on a daily basis 
um and that is really the devil is in details um and even with a sanjay far advantage which is a participating product they just substituting if if the customer is not really looking for a market link product substituting it with a sanjay far advantage um will see an uplift in terms of margins likewise some of the other product features on term could be would see um, an uplift you know and so on so so that is so the product mix and the nuances on product mix is one costs are are uh, another feature uh, persistency plays a very important uh, aspect on on margins and paying attention to persistency and saying uh, either saying no to business that you think is not going to be persistent or is going to be fraudulent as well as um doing dynamic underwriting that i talked about earlier which is risk based underwriting than one size fits all uh, all of that adds bits and pieces to margin so it's not just uh, just one lever of protection that goes into that is protection goes down margins go down you won't see that uh, that one on one equation because of this multi pronged approach to profitability got it got it and ma'am lastly just wanted to check uh, what what should we look for so as to get some comfort that you know what are you looking for from from the end markets to go aggressive on the protection side or to you know ramp up growth again and what changed really ma'am in the last week or in the last two months or three months which made you cautious so i'm just trying to look at both of these things well uh, you know pratik we are in the midst of a pandemic um, we really can't get uh, adequately cautious uh and uh, in, in some of the geographies um, especially in the western world they they just not able to sell term because how does one price um against a you know against a pandemic and also with a gestation period easily of two weeks uh, even if the, the individual doesn't know that he or she has uh, and there is no waiting period uh, of course there'll be a waiting period once we have the new term several uh, term pro- um, product but right now there is no waiting period and so on so and that's why the cautious and, and also um when we juxtapose that with the um with the a trend in in covid claims um it was not it was no rocket science for us to go slow so to your question as to what would we like i think we would if for example there was a way wherein we could access um uh, hospital records uh, or of people could voluntarily say that okay i will share my hospital records and um, there is single number uh, for example either it's a um aadhar number or or something which is a unique number S- similar to say in the uk you can't get nhs um availment unless you uh, uh, sorry availment in an nhs hospital unless uh, you give your social security number it's mandated so there is one record of each individual of all health related um uh, treatment that has been done now me as an individual i might be able to share a score with a life insurer so that i can show get a cheaper so that kind of a nuanced approach is really what we are looking for where we can help connect the dots rather than really be reasonably blind uh, in, in terms of not having adequate information to be able to price this and that wouldn't medical inspection help you in this like i remember uh, speaking to you in a conference and you said you know we are putting a lot of policies on hold because customers are really worried uh, to go to diagnostic centers to get their medical reports and uh, uh, isn't that can can't that be done or uh, you know that could be one of the ways to get over this right where you get to know the customer profile i mean the customer's medical history basis which you can sell protection right uh in terms of um, having telemedicals or no i am saying he can go to a diagnostic center no, but in a patient right? he is not going to be happy going to a diagnostic center right? so uh, he is not he was not even happy until quarter 2 for a home uh, visit from one of our uh, empaneled uh, medical professionals so that's the chal- challenge that we face in a against the pandemic uh, people were not even um, okay for to come in downstairs into common area with you know below the building to get something done or uh, so uh, telemedicals was the only thing that was maybe that we could make uh, make some connect with the customer um but that telemedical in terms of headroom is not endless either um so these are the challenges wherein you know do we just go ahead and sign up somebody because he's a salaried customer uh, he is mass affluent you know uh, it really it makes no sense because just because with that profile it that doesn't tell us a lot about his medical profile 
sorry suresh you were no so uh, sorry just to add you know look frankly it is always good to recalibrate we have looked at these little bit of reinsurance uh, feedback the tightening the covid claims or whatever but we do believe in the long term protection is a large opportunity and you know the idea is to build a full ecosystem from what you're saying there's a fair amount of analytics going in we have a lot of learning in terms of which geography which profile we do understand what kind of product and pricing what distribution you are right in the sense that we need to look at how should the medicals be taken care of whether it should be pre approved whether it should be non medical whether it should be tele underwriting and you know over a period of time how it will all evolve is to build a further you know till such time we are on uh, getting the customer on board we are a little careful over a period of time what we will see is once the customer is on board if we are able to drive health related if we are able to drive other ecosystems where we are able to work with the customer to lead a healthy life you know the protection opportunity will increase all over again so even the new product that we have launched right now the fit to protect life is very well targeted to make sure to say that look you need to come in protect yourself but as you grow older and you have uh, you know more health related concerns you can actually shift and the product aut- automatically shifts uh, from uh, some critical illness, critical illness right yeah. so these are the kind of innovations which we have constantly been bringing across and and i do believe that the protection opportunity will grow and uh, you know we we need to be right in terms of what how what kind of scale up you want to do at which period thank you ladies and gentlemen in the interest of time we take the last question from the line of vinod vinod rajamani from hsbc please go ahead yeah uh, thanks for taking my question uh, i just wanted to know this uh, this irda move towards uh, standardization of uh, products uh, so um, on this um, uh, things like saral bima and so on is that a, 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 i'm sure the the volumes it will definitely help in terms of volumes but is there a is there a risk of uh, some bit of uh, say cannibalization of your existing product portfolio and also uh, you know uh, the sum assured will is will be lower than um, you know the products you currently sell but uh, is there a risk there and do you think it's some bit of some some overreach from the regulator uh, how, how are you currently viewing this uh, standardization move uh, by irda and could it uh, sort of could we have a standard par policy standard non par product and so on going forward can you want to think yeah so yeah it's a good uh, initiative in my view uh, by the regulator to come up with uh, the standardized products uh, because uh, the uh, it will help uh, uh, sort of the um, uh, help customers understand what they are buying uh so standard products will also get that uh, eyeball so uh, and it's actually beneficial for the industry i, I believe uh so largely i think it's uh, set in the right direction um but specifically on this uh, uh standard term product um whether it's going to cannibalize our products i doubt uh since like you rightly mentioned the uh, some assured uh, that the industry currently cases to the average some assured is roughly around 75 80 lakhs uh, for the industry uh whereas this one is kind of uh, uh it's not quite capped but uh, it, it is going to be in less than 25 lakh segment uh so it's not really uh, it's not going to really cannibalize uh, i don't think uh but in terms of the um <clears throat> whether the um market is going to be different uh, yes it's certainly a different target market uh and um whether the price is going to be commensurate with the risk Uh, only time will tell and but there the important uh, aspect there and in my view is the underwriting norms uh, uh, come uh, an, uh, an individual company uh, follows uh, so the i think it's very important that industry doesn't get very aggressive in writing for protection uh, especially in the standardized term product uh, since it's an unknown market it's uh, better to tread with caution at least in the initial days and once there is some Uh, experience that develops uh, in the next one or two years then based on the experience then we can probably go a little bit more aggressive so my uh, uh, so my uh, my preferred kind of a strategy would be to uh, tread with caution do uh, stringent and writing in the initial days and once the experience develops then we can see based on the experience we can see how to uh, sort of you know uh, take the uh, forward whether there will be non par taking standard products and past uh, there is a talk about annuity uh, standard product 
Um, but I think annuity is already fairly standard in, in my view. So it may not be very different from the um, current uh, annuity products that uh, companies have. But let's see how that new uh, standard annuity product uh, controls uh, are. And, uh, and I think based on the success of these initial standard products, I think uh, IRD might come up with uh, more such standard products is what I, uh, I think. Thanks for that. Thank you. I would now like to end the conference over to Ms. Viva Padalkar for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, uh, for being there on today's call. The detailed disclosure on our results is available in our investor presentation. I would like to thank all of you. Stay safe and take care. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of HDFC Life, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.